on, on this important and victorious day. We're gathered here today to herald in a new era, to um, uh, note our sense of relief and our sense of hope for the days ahead. Um, and the death of Osama bin Laden is uh, news that we greeted with relief and with gratitude to, toward President Obama and our military forces overseas. Um, and so I want to turn it over first to Dr. Maher Hatout, who is the co-founder and the senior advisor to the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Thank you, everybody, for coming here. As uh, Egina correctly said, that this is a significant day. It is a day of relief. Osama bin Laden is not on our planet anymore, so our planet would be a better place without him. Now he is in the hands of God, who is the final judge, who will judge him the way he he deserves. Uh, we are uh, seeing this day as a day, as the president said, of unity of all the American people, and as a day of hope that a dark page is turned off, is over, and we should look to uh, a better future where as far as our relationship with the Muslim world, there is the bankruptcy of the institution of terror and extremism and the emergence of the peaceful populist movement that are achieving success in the area. In the United States, I think we can focus on the cohesiveness and unity of our society and just to look forward to see a better America not seeing Muslims through the lens of the dictators, nor through the lens of terrorism. There is a reality of the Muslims that needs to be embraced and, uh, and fostered uh, to contribute with all other elements to make the future of America better. And uh, if there are any questions at the end, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Atut. Um, next up, we're fortunate to be joined by, uh, while the mayor is traveling to D.C. today, um, we have with us the mayor's uh, chief of staff, uh, Jeff Carr. Good morning. Um, Reverend Jeff Carr from the mayor's office. I just want to say um, this is an important day, obviously, in the history of our country, and uh, the mayor and our city is thankful for the fact that um, Osama bin Laden is no longer um, around to be able to uh, institute tax on this city or other parts of this world. Um, we're also grateful to the men and women of our military who um, so successfully um, accomplished this mission and for the president who's actually um, ordered this mission. I would say this though, we're also proud to be here with our um, Muslim brothers and sisters who, as I think Chief Deputy Chief Hillman will tell you, have been partners in this city um, against the war on terrorism. And I think it's important as we move into this next phase um, to remember that, um, as the president said last night, uh, is Osama bin Laden, bin Laden was not a Muslim leader. Um, he was a Muslim, but he was not a leader. The folks who are leaders um, of the Muslim community are here with us today. They stand for peace, and we stand with them as well. And I think it's important as we move forward um, in the days ahead, I think uh, Deputy Chief Hillman will talk about the See Something, Say Something campaign. It's more important now than ever to be vigilant, um, as there might be those who would want to make a statement uh, in support of Osama bin Laden by trying to terrorize um, our communities. We need to be extra vigilant here in Los Angeles around the country. If you see something, if you see someone who looks suspicious, call law enforcement. Let them know. Say something so that they can check it out. Um, and let's not stereotype people who look a certain way, um, who may happen to be Muslim and wear a particular um, style of dress. Let's remember that they are uh, citizens of the United States of America. They are our friends, our community members, and uh, again, we stand here today with them and, and thank them for what they contribute to our community. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and next we have uh, Deputy Chief Mike Downing from the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, thank you and good afternoon. This is uh, really marks the closing of a dark era and the beginning of a, of a new, fresh, hopeful era. Uh, we've always said that our strength, our real counterterrorism strength, came from our partnership with the Muslim communities, and especially the Muslim Public Affairs Council, who has been so vocal on the issue. Uh, they have been ones to denounce terrorism, to denounce violence, to denounce Osama bin Laden from the very beginning. 
and, and we very much appreciate that. We will continue this partnership because it brings real resiliency for our communities and it's going to be the longer term solution to this phenomena that we're seeing. The threat of terrorism is not going to be over and it's not only from the violent extremists. So we need to continue uh, our vigilance. And uh, there are people within the United States that uh, have violent tendencies uh, based on ideology that we still need to deal with. And uh, we are concerned that because of this death, it may give justification to, to act out. And that's why we need people to participate with us. We need Americans to step up to the plate and participate and embrace all the communities. And uh, that's why we have iWatchLA.org. Uh, you can call 877-A-THREAT to report any kind of suspicious activity. And today we have, uh, we don't, there is no threat to the United States right now. However, we are on a bit of a uh, heightened alert in, uh, in over the next uh, week, several weeks or so. Uh, so you'll see extra patrols around places of worship, mass gatherings, hard and soft targets. Uh, but I do want to stress that uh, our number one strength, our greatest strength and resiliency comes from our partnerships uh, with the communities and especially in this case uh, with the subject of Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda affiliates our strength comes from the relationship and partnerships that we have uh, with the Muslim communities uh, throughout this nation uh, especially here in Los Angeles because I feel that we have a very good model and a very good relationship thank you Thank you, Chief Downing. The, re the reality is that uh, seven out of the last domestic terror plots have been foiled because of a tip from a Muslim. And 40% of all of the domestic terror plots since 9-11 have been foiled because of a tip from a Muslim. And that's a testament to the strength of the partnership between Muslim communities across the country and our, our partners in law enforcement from the federal to the local level. Um, we're uh, fortunate to be joined now. He slipped in the side door. Um, Steve Gomez, who is the special agent in charge of the FBI LA field office. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here today. Um, big, from the FBI's perspective, the big concern is that the, uh, the capture and elimination of Osama bin Laden has now potentially created a situation where there will be individuals that may want to react um, to this, uh, this incident and uh, may want to react to the U.S., either U.S. persons or U.S. interests here in the United States or globally. So what we are doing, uh, we are working through our J Joint Terrorism Task Force partners to uh, gather and uh, analyze intelligence on an expedited basis and we are looking to determine whether there are any threats posed to us in our territory here in Los Angeles, the greater Los Angeles area. Um, as uh, Chief Downing mentioned, there is no specific threat to uh, our territory uh, as far as uh, a threat that is Osama bin Laden related and so we, uh, we can feel comfort in that. However, uh, given uh, the nature of terrorism, we have to uh, lean forward, we have to be proactive, and we have to make sure that we don't let anything happen. So besides working with our law enforcement uh, counterparts, we are also working with the private sector, who are the uh, key, um, partic key participants in our critical infrastructure in our territory. We have to make sure that those uh, infrastructure are uh, protected and are safe. And we are also working with the uh, various communities in the uh, Los Angeles area. Uh, making sure that there is information uh, flowing uh, back and forth so uh, the communities know what to look for and uh, and they're also educating us on what we need to be uh, keeping in mind and, uh, and, and I think it's a very uh, uh, it's a great thing that we're having this press conference here at the uh, at the impact uh, office uh, following their grand opening on Saturday which uh, myself and uh, Chief Downing participated in and uh, MPAC has, uh, has been a great partner for the FBI. Uh, we've worked together on a number of uh, different initiatives, um, press conferences. Uh, probably the most significant one that I ever recall is in uh, 2004 when we announced the Be On the Lookout for Adam Gadan, who is uh, one of our top terrorists that we are looking for. So uh, um, I want to thank uh, MPAC for calling this press conference and allowing us to uh, come out here and show the partnership. Uh, MPAC is showing great leadership um, with the community and uh, I just want to thank you for uh, for giving me the opportunity to come down here 
and to speak to all of you. Thank you. Um, we have also been um, working hand in hand with uh, local, state, and federal government um, day in, day out since 9-11 and long before 9-11. And we are fortunate to be joined by LA City Council President Eric Garcetti. Thank you very much and, and good morning and thank you for doing this inside. The last one was just outside. But we, we uh, are so pleased to be here today, not only to uh, celebrate the turning of a page and a modicum of justice, uh, a measure of closure for families and remembering how many Angelinos um, have lost their lives, not just on 9-11, but also um, in Afghanistan and wars across this world. Um, but more than anything else today, we also want to make sure that Angelinos know the city is safe, that we do not, as was mentioned, have any threats related to uh, the actions taken by our brave armed forces and intelligence communities yesterday. But we are asking for the public's assistance. But we were just asked at the last press conference, um, people are scared, people are afraid, uh, people are worried that something is going to happen now uh, that Osama bin Laden has been killed. We want to reassure folks today that this is a safe city. Seven out of the last ten uh, terrorist threats were um, thwarted by the participation of regular residents. We have patriots here in America, patriots that are Muslim, Jewish, Christian, agnostic, atheist, uh, Hindu. Uh, we have a country of people who love America. And the best way to celebrate today is by not being afraid, by going to uh, cheer for the Lakers, um, or even the Dodgers in these tough times, uh, by going out with your family, uh, being safe, but also what we have done for the last decade. Keep a careful eye out and let us know at one eight seven seven a threat if you see suspicious activity. And I want to underscore that. People, by the way they look, are not suspicious. By the color of their skin, by the way they worship their god, uh, by the religion that they practice. It is activities that we all know and can see, whether it's neighbors or in a workplace, somebody who is carrying something that uh, looks a little off, um, people who are discussing something that sounds dangerous. Those are the activities we want people to report. We don't want people to overreach in this moment and start reporting people because they look different or they speak different or they have a different religion. And so today is a, a great day for celebration. I can, brevemente en español también. Uh, uh, no, and now uh, I want to switch gears and, and bring in a couple of our uh, interfaith voices um, who we have done countless work with, particularly in the face of trying to promote um, religious unity, religious harmony, and religious cooperation here in the city of Los Angeles and across the country. Um, we have first with us Rabbi Joshua Levine Greater with the Abrahamic Faiths Peacemaking Initiative. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rabbi Joshua Levine Greater, uh, Pasadena Jewish Temple and Center, as well as the chair of the Abrahamic Faiths Peacemaking Initiative, a coalition of over uh, 40 religious leaders, Muslim, Christian, and Jewish, many of whom are standing uh, with us today. And in the Jewish community today, as you know, is, is Yom HaShoah, the Holocaust Memorial Day, and how fitting it is that we stand able to say that another man of evil, another unspeakable evil person has been removed from the world. In our tradition, we live with paradox. And so there are those who will be celebrating this day. And I've heard that word already today. Uh, I, I am torn on that word. It is, I'm with deep gratitude to our military, to our president, and to the brave men and women who were able to bring justice and to remove an evil person from our midst. Our world is safer. But in no way will I be dancing in the streets over this because we have a lot more work to do. We have a lot more uh, effort to put in to bring peace to our world. And our tradition speaks deeply of paradox of not being celebratory when our enemies fall. It says it in the Proverbs, it says it in our traditions, it says it in our Bible, that while human nature perhaps is to seek revenge and to, to gloat, it is our religious tradition that calls us to, uh, to raise ourselves up and to uh, be in a more godlike place, to say that sometimes justice comes with the face of death, but that is not something that we are necessarily going to celebrate. And so I am proud to stand here with the Muslim community on this day 
and to say that these are the voices of peace and of moderation and that Osama bin Laden never was and never should be the voice of Islam and that I'm happy, I do celebrate, that hopefully we can now have new voices and the voices of the men and women I know who work for MPAC and around the country and around the world who have been tarnished by this man's actions in the name of their religion. And as a Jewish leader, I'm proud to stand here and that I hope that we go forward in finding ways toward peace and finding ways toward justice and finding ways to use this as an opportunity to bring ourselves together and to make our world a better and safer and more peaceful place. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. I just want to add to the message of what's been shared. I understand human emotion, um, particularly in this country at this moment, but I, uh, I want to reach out and say that there ought to be a way in which we uh, celebrate in a more subdued uh, jubilation. All of our religious traditions uh, do not celebrate the death of anyone as difficult as that is to hear. In my own private quiet jubilation, it's about our brothers and sisters in the Muslim community. A good part of my career and long before 9-11, I have worked with my brothers and sisters and there's not a day that's passed since 9-11 that I haven't heard from my own community, from every community, where have the Muslims been? Where are their voices? When oftentimes, all the time since 9-11, uh, they've not been broadcast. Today, the Muslim voice is heard throughout the world. And no one can say anymore, where are the Muslim voices? Where are they? Where do they stand? If I have this quiet jubilation about the demise of Osama bin Laden, is that our brothers and sisters can finally be heard that they are part and parcel of this great nation and they have a message about peace and how we're to get along. Not only be civil to one another, but in the growing possibility of the greatness of America. That's the kind of ju jubilation that so many of us are celebrating today. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Jacobs. Um, we've just been joined also by um, our dear Sheriff Lee Baca, who I'll turn it over to now. Well, thank you very much. As you know, I held a press conference with all the first responders and public safety re representatives throughout the Southern California region. The uh, national resources of the FBI were there along with the state and local resources. Well, let me say this. I think that all of us know now that there's an awful lot that we invest in what our great nation is all about. And so I am going to say one simple thing. And that is, I want to follow the example of our president. President Obama has elegantly described the actions and transparently described those actions through subsequent releasing of information through the military resources that were used as to how all this went about and why. At the same time, however, being an American citizen is something that is not only cherished by others throughout the entire world, but because so many people from all around the world want to come to the United States, legal or illegal, to find their dream is a tribute to what this nation's responsibility is to the world's populations that have these ideas of hope. To be an American citizen is a tremendous honor and privilege, and yet it's a right. And therefore, I want to say thank you to President Obama for staying the course, trusting your military resources, trusting your intelligence resources, trusting your Department of Homeland Security, and yes, even outreaching and trusting the men and women of the Los Angeles Police Department, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, and all of the other police agencies in this great region of diversity, Los Angeles County. This is a time for us to say that leadership works. 
that trust happens because people know how to prepare themselves for how to deal with something as difficult as violent extremists. But much more work has to be done. And that's a real privilege for us to be here at the Muslim Public Affairs Council's headquarters, where so many Muslim Americans throughout this region of America have stood up and said, we not only support this nation's safety plans, we are a part of this nation's safety plans, and we are going to continue to work closely with our own organization, the Muslim American Homeland Security Congress, and we are going to unify ourselves with our faiths, the Judaism, that Christianity, that Hinduism, Buddhism, and all the various forms of worship, we're all united in Los Angeles County to be the best Americans that we can be. Once again, job well done, President. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, our last but not least, who is the co-founder and president of the Muslim Public Affairs Council, and that is Salam al Mariyadi. Thank you. After uh, all has been said, there's not much to say. But uh, I, I think the, the show of unity today really spells it out. I don't think we need to say anything. It's now, uh, as the president said, we've achieved victory in the demise of bin Laden. It now ushers a new era uh, of democracy and human rights in the Muslim world, where we say no to dictators and no to terrorists. We say no to both. Uh, and our embrace of people uh, uh, around the world who support human rights and democracy will be vital in ultimately winning the war against terrorism. And then our unity in America will be even more vital here in protecting our country and enriching our pluralism. So with the unity that we have demonstrated today, uh, we, we thank law enforcement, we thank our government partners, we thank the Muslim uh, community and our Jewish and Christian allies in demonstrating pluralism, demonstrating unity against all forms of extremism. Thank you.